I'm trying to record. <laughs> now, now is the time you choose. Hello? Excuse me, madame. Hi guys, and welcome. It's me, Jay, and this is my fall plant tour. Only recently did I start fully leaning into the plant hobby. So the dream is to have an indoor jungle. So here I am starting to amass my plant collection. So let's go. Welcome to my humble abode. My room is sectioned into two subrooms. The first room serves as office space and the inner room is my bedroom. My mom recently gifted me this bow ivy which I thought would be perfect to just make the place more jungly. I'm not really into fake plants but the ivy is an exception because they look fantastic. Without the problem of attracting pests which real ivies are notorious for. So let's start with my ficus lirata or fiddle leaf fig tree. That was so popular about 3-4 years ago and I fell for the trap of getting one. I mean how could you not? It's stunning. Well mine used to be. As you can see in this old footage it looked so much better before. I was making over my bedroom early this spring and there was just no place to put my ficus so I put it out in the balcony for several days. Big mistake. The leaves got scorched and it dropped nearly all of its leaves. Luckily I was able to save it just in time and it seems to be bouncing back, pushing out 10 new leaves this summer. But it's now looking pretty bare in the mid lower section so I'm not too happy about that. But I'm glad nonetheless that she did not give up on me. Moving on is this planthorium, handed down to me just over the summer and I almost killed it by overwatering. The smaller leaves in the bottom yellowed but thankfully I resolved it fast. Looks a bit better now and is forming new leaves, so yay! And here's a dead spathophyllum which we'll talk more about later. I should have disposed of that already, my apologies. So here's the bedroom with more faux trailing ivies. And this is my Sansevieria trifasciata which I've had for many years now actually and it has not grown at all which I now realize is because it was simply not getting enough light. It was also in this pot with no drainage hole and so I was watering it ever so slightly. It barely has any root system. I started growing it in water this summer and giving it more light and look it's already growing new leaves. And right next to it is my Monstera Deliciosa, which for a while now has been my absolute favorite plant. The big leaves, the fenestrations, the ease of care. I was finally able to source one this summer and, and it has grown two new leaves since. I made a mistake by repotting it in too large of a planter and ever since it stopped growing so I don't know. Might have to do something about that. Next up is my Aglionema modestum which I know is pretty much the basic babe of Aglionemas but frankly I don't care, I love it. It's just thriving. My mom brought two of these this spring and it sat out in the balcony. I discovered this summer that it was actually a Chinese evergreen and I immediately took care of it. Like serious care of it. This one is doing some funky growth but hey you do you boo. And down here are mostly my newest additions. First is the Philodendron Birkin. I was at this local store equivalent of a Home Depot or Lowe's in the US. I live in Greece by the way and... But anyway, I just knew I wanted a Philodendron. This was the only Philodendron they had and I just grabbed one because I wanted a Philodendron even though I was not familiar with this one. Not the smartest move but luckily this was a super easy to care for plant. Now I got this polka dot plant from a local garden center. I was just captivated by the redness on the foliage. I have not seen anything like this before and it was just so super affordable like just literally two bucks for this. I bought it even though I knew nothing of this plant. Again luckily it turned out to be an easy to care for plant so awesome. And this is my Kalankoe Flaming Katie, actually the latest addition to the family. A super common plant but I still love it nonetheless. We were actually gifted an even smaller one many many years ago but it has long died likely from overwatering. I did not realize then that it was a succulent but now I know. 
Now, this is my Tradiscanthia nanook, which I got at the same time as the polka dot plant. I too was captivated by the lavender color and was also just two bugs. I'm thinking of cutting them and replanting it so that it looks more compact in that pot. And this is my ZZ plant, which I've had for about five, six years now. Not really looking its best since I almost killed it by overwatering. <laughs> I didn't realize until recently that it wanted watering like every four or five, even six weeks. But here we are nursing it back to health. I repotted it this summer in this terracotta pot and I think we're headed in the right direction. I'm really looking forward to it getting lush and tall. Moving on to this side of the room, as you can see, this is the designated aquarium section with a small one for now. I already have plans for a bigger setup. This here is my shrimp only tank with several plants. Remember when I said we'll talk more about spathophyllums later? Well, here it is. The spathophyllums were my mom's and was previously in a four inch pot that was just completely engulfed. She put it out on the balcony this spring and they just started to die. I guess too much light and overwatering was the cause. I tried to save them this summer and half of them I put in water and the other half in soil. The ones in water seems to have done the best. I mean, look at this root system. This setup is about two months now, but it took about five or so weeks for the aquatic roots to develop. It was fascinating how it adapted. And there is the other Sensiviera, which I wanted all of them actually in this one tank, but they just couldn't fit. And that is an aquatic moss called the spiky moss. Super easy to care and grow. It's just a month in this setup and it's thriving. I love it. I'll need to trim it back soon. Probably will wait until they reach the surface of the water and then propagate the cuttings. And present of course are my yellow cherry shrimps. They are still juvenile, hence not yet so yellow. When I got them a month ago, they were almost fully translucent, but are now starting to get coloration. Once they reach full maturity, they'll be fully bright yellow, which I can't wait. This lighting fixture was a DIY made using old coffee tin can. I wrapped it with this faux ivy to help camouflage the wiring a bit. I so love this look and I'm looking forward to replacing them with real trailing plants in the future. And right next is my Syngonium or the Arrowhead plant. Super cheap and easy to care for as well, one of my new favorites. Just two weeks into my care and is already growing out new leaves. I'm looking to repot this soon and use a moss pole so that's exciting how it will develop. And right above is this shelf I recently installed and hoping to fill with plants. Only current occupant is my golden pothos. A recent purchase too and it was not in the best of shape when I got it actually. But it seems to have acclimated to my room now and is starting to grow. Albeit slower than I want it to. <laughs> the dream is the pothos will replace all these faux ivy. So that's all the inner plants. Let's move to the balcony. So I was trying to film the plants on my balcony when I felt something land on the underside of my chin. So I flicked it away and I was mortified to see that it was some kind of a beetle. How did it even land on my chin? Ugh. One thing you have to know about me guys is that I don't like bugs at all. So <laughs> it's actually one of the reasons that I kind of like stepped away from plant keeping, especially since most of my plants were outdoor plants. And I understand that it's gonna be inevitable when dealing with outdoor plants, but we'll take it one day at a time. Here are the plants outside of my bedroom. This is my other Aglionema. It gets scorched from the sun. I should probably move it inside. Right next is my precious jade plant, which has seen better days. Unfortunately, it always gets some scorching over the summer. Mind you, I have a northeast facing window and balcony, and the soft morning light still proves to be a little too much for them. All my jade comes from a mother plant, actually, which I'll show later. Here is another one, luckily getting some shade from this wall. Next here is a couple of chili pepper plants my mom bought at a farmer's market. As you can see, one is doing great, while the other, not so much. Still trying to figure this one out. 
This right here is a paper flower plant, which I almost killed too. <laughs> I did not know it didn't like frequent watering even when the soil is all dried out. Consequently, I lost most of the foliage, but is looking to bounce back. Hopefully, new leaves reemerge down there. Now this one here is a Madagascar periwinkle and it just keeps flowering ever since I acquired it like two months ago. A super common plant too. This is thirsty AF, like for real. It, it will droop if not watered daily. And that there is some propagations that I tried. I even followed a YouTube guide, but evidently I failed. And that's a miter aloe and another one. It's an aloe that just keeps on aloeing. Holy's aloe comes from one mother plant that a friend of my mom gifted to her like eight, nine years ago or something. These ones here I repotted just last summer. Initially just three big aloes in each of these rectangular platters. And look at them now. One year later, they're just overflowing. And there's another one. Moving on, this is my spineless yucca, which almost died. <laughs> it was so root bound in a broken pot. And so a lot of water would escape when I watered it. Consequently, it wasn't able to drink enough. This summer though, I finally decided to repot it and it seems to be doing much better. And there's the other spathophyllum, which I don't think is doing any better. I should take it out. That is a primrose jasmine that was handed to me this summer. It had no blooms and still has not bloomed, so I'm still working on getting it to bloom for next season. Next is the Indian shot my mom brought home this spring. Looks okay, nothing much to say about it. I don't really know much about it and my interest is minimal. <laughs> well, hello there. Now this here is a mini olive tree. I've had this for many years now actually and it bears olives every single year. Unfortunately, no olives this year. I mean, I've just really neglected it. Oh, and Nikita, my pit bull likes to pick on the olives which I caught her on a few occasions. Oh, look at this spider web. <laughs> I'm going to take this one more seriously now, I promise. Need some pruning and all. And here is another Indian shot with a rose geranium on it. All the geraniums here my mom planted, I don't know where she gets them. I'm currently not all that interested in them to be honest. <laughs> Maybe in the future. I just love the red tips on the jade plant. They get them when exposed to a lot of light. And another miter aloe. And here in the corner is the mother of all my jades. It's doing so well under the shade of this wall. They're so green and plump. Hi, my love. Look at all that weed in there. And this mother of thousands just keep appearing out of nowhere. A few years ago, they just popped out of nowhere and infested all these planters here. I discovered they're toxic to dogs, so I just removed them all. Like Nikita doesn't eat any of my plants. However, this mother drops these tiny plantlets, which I am scared Nikita might ingest. Here are just more plant duplicates, Indian shot, geraniums, miter aloe. This one here is an aloe vera, also called the true aloe. This big one is the mother plant and was the sole inhabitant of this pot actually. Now it's just overflowing with lots of babies. I did nothing to this but water it when it needs it and it's thriving. Needs repotting probably next spring. And here's another jade. That's how red it gets with too much direct light which you risk them getting scorched. And here's just more duplicate plants. I forgot I had one more plant, the parlor palm situated in the living room. Another common plant, but I absolutely adore. I should get one more actually for my room, like a big one. So I'm well aware that my plants are pretty much very common house plants, but 
I love them so much uh, and I'm so excited to be keeping them and to growing even a bigger collection of plants. I already have a lot of plants on my radar and I'm just so super excited to see how this urban oasis jungle is going to transform over the next year. Watch this video here and see you in the next one.